Verticals is arguably uh, the biggest shot play that we ha have with this offense, and what I really like about it is it has the potential to really rip the defense apart. Uh, we do some underneath things that are simple, uh, and I really think that they're beneficial. Um, but real quickly, what we're going to do with this is we're going to first place DeMarco Murray on an in pattern. And you see that he's going to serve as kind of a suck down route uh, for everything else we're going to be doing with this play. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag route Des Bryant. He's kind of our playmaker receiver. If we get in trouble, we can hit him. Uh, like I said, this is primarily a shot play. You only call this play in, in press coverage situations. The primary defense we look to use this against is two man under. And we're going to motion Cole Beasley to the outside. When he sets his feet, then we're going to snap the ball. And you see that we're going to be able to play a user catch game on that outside with Cole Beasley on that wheel route. Primarily, he's going to get separation where you're not even going to need to use or catch him. Uh, sometimes you will need to, though, as that first time we saw he, we did need to. Here it is, and you, you come underneath, and it's a, it's a little difficult to show you this. Um, this is going to take some practice. Um, in my opinion, this is kind of the thing that changes the game for this offense, uh, what we can do with Colt Beasley coming out here and being able to rip the, the top off the defense. Um, and you don't want to wait too long. You see that I've been waiting longer, and you see that it gives that safety opportunity to kind of really come over and uh, really – Play that, play the, play the ball there, and uh, let me get my hot routes in here. What you want to do is you want to you want to throw it right as he turns up field. So he's going to come, he's going to turn up field, and then you're going to throw it and you're going to come underneath the corner. Um, and it, it's actually let me show you it's a little bit better if we put a bigger target out there. Um, now I know this isn't practical, uh, but I think it is easier to teach it with a bigger guy out there so like a Terrence Williams and we're gonna put him out there and we'll show you we'll show you this uh, like I said that this is primarily something we really only use if they're pressing um, well you can here you see Terrence Williams is gonna have a little bit easier of a time to get inside uh, and make a play and, and part of it has to do with route running you wanna have your best route runner out there uh, as well and uh, here you see it, and we're having trouble. <laughs> we're having trouble showing you, but like I, I promise you that this is something really effective. Um, and I've used it, used it, and used it, and uh, it's really, really good, especially when he cuts up field. Like I said, just cut up field, and there it is. There's the back shoulder throw animation we wanted to get. And you can do this with Cole Beasley. It's just easier to show you uh, what I'm talking about with Terrence Williams because he's a bigger target. You can kind of use or catch with him more. But you see you want to throw it right as he comes underneath, and I don't know how he intercepted that ball. But uh, Terrence Williams is right in a good play. And, and oftentimes, uh, I don't really – I typically pass lead up uh, with this. I haven't tried it. I'm going to try pass leading down here because we want this back shoulder. And there you see, there's that back shoulder animation we really enjoy with the pass lead down. And we're going to click on to our player, and uh, we're going to pull him down like we're trying to come back to the ball. Come down, click on him, and there you see it. There's the user catch. There's the bread and butter, and uh, we'll see if we can't. Let me just see here. Uh, let me just throw Cole Beasley back in the game and show you that this does work with him. Uh, like I said, it does take a little bit to get the timing to really understand what we're trying to do with this. If you understand the concept, you can apply this to multiple plays. Um, this comes from the play verticals, and I'm, like I said, in my opinion, this is really effective, and it's really valuable uh, when we're talking about beating man coverage in a, in a playbook that is primarily designed to beat zone. And so let's look at this with Cole Beasley and uh, same hot routes that we mentioned in the beginning. And uh, here we go. Pass lead down, click on, and we I think we threw it a little too early. Uh, like I said, you're holding your guy backwards. You're trying to make him run backwards. And what it's going to do is it's going to suck them down and it's going to hold them. And, and we're having a little trouble. I think it may be because we're hitting the left trigger. Um, and so you don't always want to hit the left trigger. Some people think that you do, but you don't always uh, want that. Here he goes up, throw it, come back to the ball, and you see that Cole Beasley can do the same thing. It, it works the same with him. Uh, and the cool part about this is it does do some damage in the zone. Uh, you'll see here. 
Whoops, I threw it to the running back on accident. Sorry about that. Um, this is a bigger, this is a really touchy play, and I will be honest with you, it's a very advanced play, uh, but I wanted to show it uh, just because I wanted you to get a taste of, of what we can really do uh, with some of the passing trajectories uh, in this game. And when you work on this play and you run it and run it and run it and run it, it is very beneficial. I mean, I still have trouble with it, but with a pass lead to the outside against the zone, you see it's even beneficial. Let me show you. That was cover four. Let me show you cover three really quickly. So cover three, they back off. We're throwing it to the outside. See, gets out there just a little better. Um, the running back's job is to really kind of try to help out with that, and we didn't get that there. Let me try to maybe put him on a little swing pattern. And we weren't able to get it there. So you see that it's, it's just something you kind of got to fill out. You kind of got to work with against zone, in my opinion. Uh, oftentimes, I don't look for this route against zone. Uh, but if it happens to be there, typically if they're backed off, um, you typically have a better shot at getting it out there. But they do have the opportunity to swat it. Um, what you're going to see, though, is the more that, that they are playing this route to Beasley, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to open up this route to Jason Witten up the middle. And you see they go out to Beasley, and we can pass lead down into the inside to Jason Witten against cover three and cover four. Uh, you saw that right there. We'll show it to you one more time here. Uh, off of this Beasley route, with them paying attention to that so much, we're now going to be able to slide this in, and then we can even hit this post route over the middle of the field to, uh, to Terrence Williams. And, and this is why I tend to maybe put Murray on that option route uh, to really kind of help out Terrence Williams as he comes over the middle uh, on that deep post. Murray's going to suck that guy down, and we're going to be able to slide in behind with Terrence Williams over the top. So just a couple options for you there. Um, like I said, we normally have him on an in route. Um, the only problem with that is, like I said, it doesn't do as good of a job against the zone. Like if you don't want to use Cole Beasley uh, against cover two men, you can, like I said, you're more than willing to, more than able to use Jason Witten. It's not as good as it used to be, but you can still work it a little bit. Um, the, the, the really winning route against man is this post route to Terrence Williams. Uh, a lot, and, but you, they're going to watch out for that with a user player, and that's why we use the route to Cole Beasley as such a frustrating route because it's hard to stop. And trust me, when you work on this and you get the timing down and you – you see, there's your user catch animation uh, that we were looking for. And so you need to practice on it. Uh, it does take some time, guys, I, I'm telling you. But if you put the time in, it is worth it in the end. This is a really good route. Uh, pass lead down, you click on, and then you want to bring him back. You want to hold the trigger down and then up. And what you're doing is you're refocusing him. You're making him look back to the ball and make a back shoulder catch. So down and then up. And there you see there it is again, that user catch that's hard to guard. And then what they're going to do is they're going to drop their corner into a flat zone. When they drop that corner into a flat zone, if you recognize that, if you see them do this, if you see the corner come, that safety comes down, watch, lob the ball over the top, and ah, we didn't get it there, but I think it's just because I got excited and threw it a little too quick too early. But what you're going to see is you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one over the top, and what that does is it gives you the opportunity for big plays. You're not always going to make them, but it gives you the opportunity. Here they dropped him down, and there's the separation for the deep ball to Cole Beasley over the top. This beats cover zero blitzes to death. It takes advantage of cover two man in that user catch arena. But watch what we get here. When the safety comes down, watch this. The safety comes down. He can't stay with him on the turn, and that's where we make our money because he's playing that back shoulder so much that we hit Cole Beasley over the top. And you see this is very effective because what they're going to be having to concern about if they leave Earl Thomas coming over the top is they're going to have this, this back shoulder route. And like I said, you need to work on it. You want to pass lead it down and to the outside where only your receiver can get to it. And this typically will work uh, effectively, especially if you get the hang of the user catching uh, ability here. But like I said, it's a tough play. It's a tough throw. I'm not knocking that. I'm not avoiding the fact that it is. But in my opinion, uh, if you learn how to do it, if you learn how to throw it uh, like this, like what I'm showing you, and you hold your player down into the outside with your pass lead, uh, this play becomes a monster. And uh, this, this route uh, really, really is hard to stop.
um, when you work it right, when you work it properly, when you work it in conjunction with the rest of the offense. Um, cover two man is, is really nullified with this play because of this route. It does such a good job of beating it. I'm telling you, I know, I know you're saying that this doesn't look as good in practice mode. It doesn't look as good. You're not making every catch. And uh, I'm telling you, the more you practice this, if you throw this route 100 times a night, 100 times a night, practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it, you get into a game and you feel comfortable, this becomes a monster of a route. And let me, let me just note, sometimes this corner will whiff. When he whiffs, you hit him over the top. See there, he whiffs. Under, he went over the top, we should have thrown back shoulder. And so it's a read, it's a progression read, it's very simple, but it's also very complex. One other thing real quick before we get out of here, this route to Des Bryant will beat man uh, coming over the middle. You see that we, we use the running back as a pick play. Uh, we showed you the zone, your primary target is going to be that deep post route. Um, another thing you can do though on the zone is you can play a user catch game and, and, and use Cole Beasley his wheel route as a cutoff route and you're just going to come underneath and you're going to make a user catch so we'll show you that a couple times and we'll get out of here so you're going to pass lead it up and then you're going to come underneath it and make a user catch and there you see us there you see the look of that and then like I said you can still work the back shoulder against the zone it's not as effective it's not as beneficial in my opinion it's a little more dangerous um, but you can pass lead down to the outside and then you can work that back shoulder throw uh, depending on how they play, Jason Witten, I think, is going to really play into how you, you know, if it's worth going to or not. Because um, Jason Witten's route is going to be open, too, uh, against the zone if you squeeze it in between those guys. Um, so just a lot of options with this play. Like I said, it's a tough play to run. Uh, this is by no means a, a beginner play. But in my opinion, it's a very effective play. And if you can work on it, you can get the timing down. This is kind of what makes you a great player. And I struggle with this. I still I struggle with this play. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. I mean, you're obviously seeing I've dropped some I've, – I've missed a lot of passes, and uh, I've had some trouble with it. But the amount of times we're going to go to this play, uh, be it one to two, one to two, maybe three times a game, and really only when they're pressing. Uh, let me show you what cover two does to this play. This is why I really think it's effective. Verticals crushes cover two. And what you're going to see is Cole Beasley's route is going to crush it. Um, if we get a good animation, we didn't get a good one that time. We almost got picked, but but here it is against cover two one more time here. And you just try to make that user catch. Um, and hopefully Rumo makes a better throw in real life. But, but like I said, it's a, it's a play. It's, it's something we use. Um, I wouldn't show it to you if it wasn't. Uh, it's not the best play we have by far. Um, and I think that, you know, just because I you know, put it in here, you think I run this a lot. I don't. Like I said, I run this probably, like I said, three times a game, maybe. Um, sometimes I don't run it at all. Um, this is a shot play. Um, and I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's the primary purpose of this play. And um, one thing that is, is good about it, I think it's a safe shot play. Uh, I think that it's a deep shot play uh, that we can utilize. Uh, and we want to pass lead that vertical out to the left side, to the outside, and up. And uh, we want to really try. And like I said, you don't want to call this when you're where I'm at on the field. You know, this is kind of more of, like I said, a shot play. And so you want to be, you know, on your side of mil midfield and uh, really trying to hit the defense for big, big gains and uh, try to get over the top of them. And see, there's an example where we really have the opportunity. If Cole Beasley makes that catch, I mean, like I said, you know, this is a big time play. It's a big shot play. Uh, let me show you what we can do here. And, and this is what I really want to get at. When they start playing down on you, making that user catch, and they start taking advantage of that, when we lob this over the top, we now have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, for Cole Beasley to take a shot at it. And this is why sometimes I'll sub in and make a quick swap between Beasley and Williams. Uh, but, but this is just overall kind of the idea. And uh, when you mix it up with the running game, uh, like I said, this is just a really dominating scheme in my opinion. This is a shot play. It's not something we use all the time. I want to say that one more time. 
uh, but it is something you can use uh, to take advantage of, of the defense, of, the, of what we're doing here. And so we'll show you one final time here against Mann. And for some reason, Cole Beasley's not responding to me on this uh, user catch. And like I said, I haven't got it down 100%, but I did want to show it uh, because I think it's good. I think it's beneficial. And uh, one thing you may consider doing uh, with this play as well is a simpler pass lead. When he cuts this pass lead to the inside, click on and come underneath it. That's simple. It's easier. Uh, it's more. It's not as effective, in my opinion, in the long run, um, because I think that it it plays down the dominance of this this route and what we can really do with it. Um, but it is good. It is better, uh, in my opinion, for consistency. Uh, so you want to be flashy, do the first way, but you want to be kind of more consistent. Just pass it down to the inside. Down to the inside, click on, and then just come underneath it. Uh, don't mess with trying to stop and drop and you know roll and all that stuff we've been doing. Um, like I said, against cover two, this was probably the one zone that really can do much. But like I said, this is this is a shot play against the cover two. We can get a one on one with Cole Beasley in the big, uh, you know, in a big section of the cover two. The other thing, if you don't want to do that, which I don't blame you for not wanting to do that because it's not consistent. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can typically hit this um, that drag route underneath. You can hit. Uh, when we run it, get that drag right underneath because uh, they're going to be backing off heavily. And you see this drag right underneath is going to be effective, get devs some underneath yardage. But it's just uh, it's just something something to show. Uh, I wanted to show it because it is part of the scheme. It's not a big part. Uh, I think it's kind of the, the part that we use that we use it seldom, but when we use it, it's, it's really, and we should have made that catch, but when we use it, it's really effective. Um, and like I said, we really only use it uh, against press man is primarily what we're looking at. If they're running a lot of press man, we'll throw this at them. And here's a cover zero. And you'll see this absolutely gets you, you know, gives you a one-on-one -on -one against the cover zero. Um, part of the reason it's not as effective right now is because the Seahawks corners are really good. And uh, it's a little harder to use against them, but it is good, um, and we can mix it up with some of the other things we're going to be doing. So I just wanted to show this to you. Uh, I wanted to give you an opportunity to just to kind of see it in development. It's not completely there yet, uh, but in my opinion, it's very effective.